In many parts of the world, a new generation of hydrogen developers is emerging. Entrepreneurs, municipalities, project teams, and infrastructure investors who recognize the economic and environmental potential of clean hydrogen. But do not own electrolyzer factories, compressor manufacturing lines, or high-pressure storage technology. At first glance, it can appear that building a hydrogen project without owning the underlying technology is impossible. Yet the reality is very different. Nearly every major hydrogen project built today follows this exact model. The story of modern hydrogen development is not about manufacturing equipment. It is about orchestrating systems, aligning partners, securing land and power, and structuring a project so well that technology fits into place naturally. This video explains how developers around the world achieve this. Using the following framework to reveal the world's most influential hydrogen projects that were built without owning any proprietary technology. The situation begins with a global race to decarbonize heavy industry, mobility, power generation, and chemical production. Countries have set ambitious hydrogen roadmaps, industries are preparing to shift from fossil fuels to renewable molecules, and large buyers are looking for long-term offtake agreements. Yet the technical complexity of hydrogen production, electrolyzers, compressors, water purification, cooling, storage, safety systems, intimidates many potential developers. They wonder how they can participate without owning the technology. The truth is that owning technology has never been the barrier. NEOM in Saudi Arabia, Europe's hydrogen import programs, the US hydrogen hubs, Iberdrola's Puerto Llano project, and Japan's hydrogen refueling networks all followed the same principle. Developers control the project structure. OEMs supply the technology. This separation is not a weakness, but a core business model that accelerates hydrogen deployment. The task for developers, therefore, is not to invent technology, but to assemble the right components, partners, and financial structures to deliver a bankable project. Using electrolyzer equipment manufactured by companies like Thyssen Krupp Nukura, Nell Hydrogen, Plug Power, Siemens Energy, ITM Power, Peric, or Longi, hydrogen is not only acceptable, it is expected. The developer's task is to ensure the project is technically feasible, financially viable, grid-ready, compliant with environmental regulations, and attractive to investors. Using this structure, this task becomes the catalyst that shapes every decision from land acquisition to commissioning. Action begins when developers stop trying to replicate OEM expertise and instead focus on building the ecosystem around the technology. This starts with identifying a viable site, one with access to water, power, interconnection pathways, transportation corridors, and community support. Once a site is selected, developers commission pre-feed and feed studies from engineering firms such as Black & Veatch, Worley, McDermott, Technip Energies, or Wood Group. These firms integrate electrolyzer blocks, compression systems, cooling towers, water purification units, hydrogen storage tanks, pipelines, and safety controls into a cohesive design. The developer does not need in-house engineering to do this. EPC firms offer turnkey integration. In Portolano, Spain, Iberdrola wanted to build one of Europe's largest renewable hydrogen plants for Fertiberia. They did not manufacture their own electrolyzers. Instead, they procured PEM electrolyzers from Nell Hydrogen and integrated them through EPC partners. Their role was land, permitting, renewable energy development, offtake structuring, and financial closure, while the OEM handled the technical internals. This is a perfect demonstration of STAR. The situation was the need for decarbonized ammonia. The task was to build a large hydrogen plant without owning technology. The action was to procure OEM equipment and use EPC integration. The result was a functioning hydrogen plant that set global benchmarks. NEOM's $8.4 billion green hydrogen plant in Saudi Arabia offers another textbook example. The situation was a national transformation requiring scalable green ammonia exports. The task was to develop a 600-ton-per-day hydrogen system using the world's largest renewable energy-powered electrolyzer installation. The developers, ACWA Power, Air Products, and NEOM, 
did not own electrolyzer technology. Their action was to sign a 2.2 gigawatts electrolyzer supply contract with Thyssen Krupp Nukura. EPC Giants integrated the technology. The result was a project financed entirely through Project Finance, demonstrating to the world that developers can build gigawatt-scale hydrogen plants without owning technology at all. For small and medium developers who often assume only mega-projects can outsource technology. The truth is that modular electrolyzer systems have democratized hydrogen development. Companies like Plug Power offer the EX425D and EX2125D modular PEM units that can be delivered in containerized form and ramped up incrementally. Nell Hydrogen offers M-series alkaline skids that scale in predictable increments. Enapter's AEM electrolyzers allow developers with small budgets, municipalities, universities, emerging companies, to produce hydrogen without any in-house R&D. Siemens Energy's Silizer 300 offers standardized 17.5 megawatts blocks that can be deployed in clusters. Developers simply choose the module size, secure power supply, and integrate via EPC. This modularity is action executed at scale. The result is a new reality. Dozens of hydrogen projects around the world are being built by developers who do not own the technology. Everwind Fuels in Canada, for example, is building a green hydrogen and ammonia project using multiple OEM suppliers rather than manufacturing anything internally. High 24's portfolio across Europe relies on EPC integrated systems with technology sourced from OEMs. Air Liquide, one of the biggest players in hydrogen, frequently procures OEM electrolyzers instead of building their own. Even the giant Shell Rhineland hydrogen plant in Germany is built using ITM power PEM systems. This results in a clear industry pattern. Developers orchestrate projects, OEMs provide technology, EPCs integrate systems, financiers back the structure. The next part of the story focuses on how developers acquire the power needed for electrolysis without owning renewable plants. The situation in many countries is that renewable energy is abundant, but controlled by utilities, IPPs, or large renewable developers. The task is to ensure affordable, clean, reliable electricity for the hydrogen plant without building solar and wind farms yourself. Developers achieve this through long-term power purchase agreements, PPAs, green tariffs, co-location strategies, or bundling electrolyzer loads with curtailment recovery programs. Neom sources renewable power from a JV between ACWA power and air products. NG and Yara rely on multi-contract renewable PPAs. In the US hydrogen hubs, developers frequently use grid power under renewable energy certificates during early phases. The action is contract structuring rather than asset ownership. The result is cost-stable electricity for electrolyzers without needing to build generation assets. Water, compression, and storage follow the same outsourced model. Developers rely on third-party water treatment companies, compressor manufacturers, and storage solution providers. Companies like Howden, Burkhart Compression, Chart Industries, Hexagon Purus, McPhy, and Linde supply everything a hydrogen plant needs. The developer's job is not to invent or manufacture equipment. It is to assemble the ecosystem, negotiate contracts, and ensure certification and compliance. In offshore markets like Germany and the Netherlands, developers building hydrogen terminals do not own liquefaction or cryogenic technology. They license it or purchase turnkey skid units. Japanese developers building hydrogen refueling stations procure compressors, dispensers, and storage tanks from companies like Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Iwatani. Again, project plays out in real time. The situation is the decarbonization need. The task is building infrastructure. The action is leveraging existing technology. The result is operational assets that are financially viable and technically reliable. Operations and maintenance, o &M, illustrate the final dimension of technology-independent development. Developers do not need in-house hydrogen engineers on staff. OEMs offer long-term O&M contracts with remote monitoring capabilities. Service agreements include predictive maintenance, troubleshooting, and spare part strategies. 
Nell Hydrogen, Plug Power, Siemens Energy, and Nukura all provide multi-year maintenance packages that ensure uptime and safety for the project lifetime. Developers simply monitor KPIs and manage the business model. The project framework also explains how financing works without owning technology. In almost every major hydrogen project, banks and investors do not require the developer to own proprietary equipment. They require bankability, warranties, guarantees, proven performance, and reliable OEM partners. The World Bank, EIB, JBIC, and USDOE all fund hydrogen projects based on integration, not technology invention. The action for developers is assembling a well-structured business model, securing offtake agreements, and ensuring technology is Tier 1 certified. The result is access to project finance and investment capital, even without technological ownership. In the broader perspective, this shift mirrors what happened in solar and wind. Developers used to think they needed their own panels or turbines. Today, companies like NextEra, Brookfield, Orsted, and ACWA Power construct gigawatts of renewable energy without owning a single PV or turbine factory. Hydrogen is following that exact path. The value is not in the hardware, it is in land, permitting, integration, offtake, energy strategy, financing, risk mitigation, and execution. The global hydrogen economy is built on partnerships. OEMs build the technology. EPCs integrate. Developers assemble the system. Financiers fund. Offtakers buy. The situation is global decarbonization. The task is accelerating hydrogen deployment. The action is leveraging the entire ecosystem without manufacturing anything. The result is a thriving industry where developers at every scale can participate, innovate, and profit without owning any technology at all.